Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Anna Cadbury on this channel, Cat for MB. In today's session, we are going to do comprehensive practice of IFT. This is going to be the last minute practice because two days down the line, you have your exam. So for those of you who are extremely dejected because of SNAP result, now you should focus your energy on IFT, elevating your score, practicing enough so that you clear the sexual cutoff as well as the overall cutoff, right? In yesterday's session, I discussed extensively the strategy for IFT. So please watch that session and try to, you know, formulate a clear strategy for tomorrow's session, uh, day after tomorrow's exam, all right? So in today's session, we are going to do practice of vocabulary in grammar. On special classes, I am taking classes for IFT reading comprehension. So we discuss the passages of 2019, we also discuss the passages of 2018, all right? So passages, that is going to be the predominant area of your verbal ability. Last year, there were around 16 questions from 35 questions. This year as well, there will be around four passages, followed by 15 to 16 questions. So that, no doubt, is going to be the most important area of verbal ability. Um, and second most important area is going to be vocabulary. So last year, there were 13 questions. So in today's session, we are going to have a comprehensive practice of grammar and vocabulary. I have taken up the previous year questions of IFT in today's session, right? So these questions appeared in some of these years in IFT, all right? Are we all ready for practice? Before starting today's session, let me just give you a brief introduction of myself for those of you who are attending my class for the first time. My name is Neela Malkani. I possess Master's in English Literature degree as well as to solve certificate in English language training. I possess around 12 years of experience of test preparation industry and have been training students in CAD, GR, GMAT, SAT and SIPTOFU. Um, I have also been into content development and have designed and set assessment papers of English and reasoning for various exams. For a brief period of time, I also served as an examiner of English for an international organization. Recently, I have authored a comprehensive book of English for the preparation of competitive exam. The book is written in both Hindi and English and is available on Amazon. The video is brought to you by an academy. Let me take you to its portal and tell you how you can start your preparation of this with this platform. Download or install an academy learning app and fill in all the details. Start attending classes under plus, free courses and special classes. You don't have to pay anything to attend classes under free courses and special classes. All you need to do is type code NEELA and all the courses which are available or provided under these two categories will be unlocked. You can attend as many classes, you can be part of as many sessions as you want. Once you are contented with the performance of the educators as well as with the quality of education imparted in these classes, you can then enroll yourself for PLUS program. A PLUS program is going to give you the guided preparation for the exam that you are targeting. In this case, if you are targeting CAT 2021, PLUS program or PLUS offering is going to give you different features, such as 30 hours of live sessions every day. So you can, you can attend classes as per your convenient time and as per your availability. Availability. You can be part of as many batches as you want. The batches which are taken up by the top educators of India. They provide their courses on a regular basis on this platform and conduct live interactive sessions. You can put up your queries, get your answer, get your questions answered, as well as take quizzes, exercises, section tests, as well as mock tests. All these features in one single subscription. One year subscription of CAT 2021 is going to cost you 17,500 rupees and two year subscription will cost you 21,000 rupees. So if you are in second year, you should go for one year. If you are in first year, you should definitely go for two year subscription. That is going to consolidate your fundamentals as well as make you ready when you are about to graduate. All right. So that's going to be the benefit of joining two years course. Whichever model of subscription you go with, if you type code NILA, your fee is going to come down to 15,750 for one year, 18,900 for two years. 
you can reach out to me on telegram there is a group dedicated to the preparation of these exams the name of the group is neela palkani and the cavalry cat you can reach out to me on the channel as well as you can subscribe cat for mba on youtube and get notified whenever i upload a video dedicated to the preparation of these exams right i'm also going to make videos for cvat as well as for other exams which are happening in february um, i'm also going to take regular sessions for gd and pi preparation as well as for wat that is writing assessment test preparation uh iconic batch or iconic offering which has been recently introduced by an academy plus plus iconic is definitely going to guarantee you that you will be in one of the top iv leagues of india because in this iconic feature what you are going to avail is a personal coach a personal mentor will be there dedicated to your preparation plan he is going to give you a guided strategy to excel in all the areas of these exams a person who has himself studied in these colleges hi varsha hi harsha so a person who has studied in these colleges gone through the preparation of these exams face gdpi studied in these colleges and ultimately have also taught so these people are going to look at your performance consistently keep a close eye on your performance not only in the classroom but also in the test so that way um, your test analysis are going to give you the clear picture about what mistakes you are making and how you need to correct those mistakes what corrective action you need to be you need to take in order to come out of those mistakes right or in order to correct those mistakes so that way this is going to be a personal plan for you right though it's going to be a bit exorbitant yet um, it's all the worth because ultimately if you are targeting 100 percentile or if you are targeting studying in top colleges of india this is something which can you know which you should not mind paying 30000 is going to be the fee for iconic for one year all right so in iconic subscription you will be getting all the features all the benefits that you will be availing under plus okay so these are the shining stars or the students who scored 99 plus scored in cat this year consistently they were attending an academy classes and they were um the subscribers of plus plus um, offering of an academy right so you can see the result and you can be assured of your performance if you are targeting cat 2021 these results may give you some kind of affirmation about your choice of selecting an academy as your test partner the batches which are beginning or which have already begun this week the 18th of january a batch for starter or those who are beginning their preparation for cat 2021 19th january absolute week day batch and today working professional batch right so these batches are going to be taken up by those faculty members who have extensive experience of guiding mentoring and educating students an academy champions league so that's a competition which has begun on 3rd of january every alternate sunday this is going to take place 5 to 7 pm and in this competition you will be taking a scholarship test in line with the recent changes in the pattern of cat which i have introduced this year the test is going to be designed by the top educators same day you will be given the detailed video analysis of the test by the same educators so that way if you have any ambiguity or any um, doubt in any of the questions of the test that is going to be clarified same day you will be given your real time ranking because ultimately you need to know what your position is in terms of other students who are taking the exam because next year you are going to take this exam on all india level so what your position is or what um, your proficiency in all these areas is you need to know now so that you can take corrective action So this test is going to give you all these benefits. The icing on the cake is going to be the exciting prizes. 
If you are one of the top scorers of this test, you stand a chance of winning vouchers and exciting prizes. Right? So don't miss this opportunity. Go enroll yourself, take this test, and see where you stand. All right? So that's all about uh, the batches and the features which an academy has introduced to facilitate you more. Now let's begin today's practice. I hope all of you are ready. So this is going to be kind of a last minute practice. And I want all of you to participate. And this is going to target vocabulary and grammar. So I won't give you much time. So very quickly, let's look at the structure. 35 questions in verbal ability. A very clear, okay, a very short synopsis of what I discussed yesterday. 35 questions of verbal ability. The most important area, the most dominant area of entire IFD out of 112, 110 questions, 35 is going to be verbal. Overall, 105 mark. Followed by LRDI, that's going to have 30 questions for 90 marks. Quantitative ability, 75 marks, right? GK and GA will have 30 marks because each question is going to carry 1.5. So do not waste much time on GK. So what we discussed yesterday, it's going to be a time management exam, 120 minutes, 110 questions. And these 110 questions are not going to be of the level of SNAP. SNAP ke level ke questions nahi hogi, straightforward nahi hogi, easy nahi hogi. The questions are going to be moderate to difficult, to you know higher difficult level. And some of the questions will definitely be easy. You will have to identify those questions. So here, your analytical ability comes into play. Identification of those questions which are doable in less time, where accuracy, the chances of getting accurate answers is more. So your analytical ability in the examination hall. So this is what this exam is going to test. Which section you are going to start your test with, which question you are going to skip, which question you are going to attempt, and ultimately, last 20 minutes that you have after spending you know, enough time on each section, the 20 minutes that you have, which section you are going to devote, according to the paper level of difficulty on the exam day. So don't go with a preconceived notion that quant is your forte and you are definitely going to spend 20 minutes on quant because possibly quant in that paper may be very calculation intensive and very time consuming. So the possi this possibly may not be a wise strategy to go with a preconceived notion or Precondition that quant is going to be my forte or is has always been my strength. So the 20 minutes I'm going to spend on quant. That is not something which you should do. Decide which section you found more doable. So the extra 20 minutes, try to attempt that section to elevate or to increase your overall score. So performance under pressure, that is also one of the attributes that's that will um, that will be there that you will have to showcase. Because IFD itself carries a lot of um, you know, kind of uh, perception around IFD has been built. The exam is tough, take the pool of applicants is very less, and so the IFD cutoff is going to be very high. So because of that, there is enormous pressure on you to perform well, to excel in all the areas, to clear the cutoff, and to clear the overall cutoff, and same way, you know, showing your proficiency in GK. So all these pressure points may you know, um, get better of you. So you better showcase that you can perform under pressure in the examination hall. Okay? So this is what we discussed. So, okay, fine. Let's leave this part quickly. 35 minutes is advised to be spent on verbal ability. 30 minutes on LRDI. 25 minutes on quantitative ability. 10 minutes, not more than 10 minutes, maximum 12 minutes. If you are a slow reader and if you need some time to absorb the information of those long questions, you can spend 12 minutes, not more than that. So 100 minutes overall to clear the sectional minimum so that you are having a kind of a balance among each section, all the sections. The 20 minutes that you are left with, you should spend on the section that you feel is going to maximize your overall score. Again, my tip is, don't assume that you are going to spend it on verbal. See how verbal section is. 
Don't assume that you are going to do it in LRNDI. These two sections will definitely be your preferred choice because highest number of questions are from this area. But again, don't go with a preconceived notion. Decide which of these sections is going to help you increase your score. And then attempt any one of these sections. Okay? So that's the strategy which I suggested. I hope now you have kind of made up your mind that what strategy and what you know is going to be your um, your key area to focus on, right? Are we all ready to start today's practice? Chale. So that's going to be the first question, previous year IFT question. Um, look at the direction, read the direction carefully. Inappropriately used, where the underlying word or the word which is in bold face is inappropriately used. Quickly attempt the question and tell me your answer. So luxuriant and luxurious. Two words have been used in four sentences. You will have to find out which of these sentences is incorrectly using the word. Alright, I don't see any answer coming up. Hi Shitich, good evening, good evening. Yeah, so I just started the practice of vocabulary in Milano. Quickly, tell me what your answer is. All right. But then, which of these is using the word incorrectly, inappropriately. Two confusing words. All right. So luxuriant is something which is abundant. Something which is in profusion. Profuse, a profusion. Too much of something, luxuriant. Thick vegetation. Something which thrives. So flourished, thrive is luxuriant. Okay? So this is used for something which, which grows rapidly and which grows in abundance. That is luxuriant. Luxuriant growth of apples. Luxuriant growth of flowers in summer, in winter. Yes, it is thick in the sense of growth, right? So here this word is fine. Her luxuriant black hair is the most beautiful I have ever seen. So here also luxuriant is all right, right? So thickly grown hair, right? Thick black hair. So luxuriant is also correct in this sentence. He owns a luxurious yacht. So that's also correct. So luxurious is full of luxuries. 
Whereas D is incorrect. D is going to be the answer. Coral grows. Luxuriously, it should be luxuriantly. Adverb has to be luxuriantly. On that, we. Okay? So, coral grows rapidly as well as thickly. On that, we. Should be the meaning. And hence, the word should be luxuriant. So, answer is D. Alright? So, be clear with the difference of luxuriant and luxurious. Same. Which of these words is used inappropriately? Or which of the sentences is using these words inappropriately? So, we have two words here, prophecy and prophecy. Both mean the same thing, but the, the form is different. This is now, this is verb. Alright, now find out the answer. So do you prophesy? So we need a verb here. That's correct, right? So do you prophesy a return to wartime prosperity? Yes. So this is used as a noun, whereas we need a verb here. Alright? He prophesied. Look at this word. Verb is used. S is verb. So ED is there. ED can only be there in the verb. He is an expert at prophesying. So again, verb is used. ING. They made many dire prophecies. Here it is used as a noun because plural is there. Okay? So we'll see you have a noun with S you have verb. So that's the only distinction otherwise the meaning is same. Prophecy is nothing but foretelling future. Foretelling future or to prognosticate. Another word is prognosticate. Prognostication is also always done for future. Take it? To say what is going to happen in future is prognostication. Prophecy is also same thing. Nastidamus prophecies. So here, prophecies, plural, will be there. He prophesied that Second World War would happen in this continent. So prophes he prophesied, ed, second form. Take it? So this is verb, this is noun. Are we clear? Now look at this. This is verb and this is augury is noun. This also means the same thing. Right? So it augurs well for future. The vaccination, the successful Experiment of vaccination augurs well for the future. It augurs well for the future. That means it, it is a good sign for the future. Yes. So with S, it's verb. With C, it's not. That's how you, you need to remember it, right? So A-U-G-U-R, augur is verb. Augury is not. All right? That also means same thing. Indication of future. Something which portends future is ugly. Okay? Next question. Now what you need to do in this question is you have to choose one word which is going to be fitting in both the sentences. One word which is going to be the answer of both the sentences. Choose.
Yeah, so sometimes it happens that practice with C is now, practice with S is verb. Advice with C is now, advice with S is verb. Right? So in some of the cases, yes, it's true. Okay, so choose the word which is going to be applicable in both the sentences. Yes, Gabinus is locations. So here the sentence says, and as indigenous people are denied access to their traditional lands, their cultures are dying. So their cultures are diminishing. The result is that now over half the world's languages are dash. So the culture is dying. As a result, the languages they used to speak are also dying. Okay, so Gallinus sycophantic is not making any sense. Now let's see if Moribit is also fitting in the second sentence. This says, this says the third aim, the big one is to convince Locust that their research program is dash and Gawker's contextualized alternative is the way of the future. Now he has to be convinced that his research program does not have any hope, does not have any prospects for the future. And this is the way of the future. That means this is going to be more fruitful than this is. So here, this word is also fitting in most both the sentences. Hence, answer is not D, answer is A. Right? So A, monibin, is nothing but something which comes to a stagnant point. Something which comes to a stagnation and is not is not um, progressing further. Something which has become useless, or also something which is which is which has come to a point of destruction. Okay, so that is moribund. M O R is the root here, and that always comes for death. Okay, so mortal. M O R M O R T both root. Both roots come for death. So M O R T, mortal, immortal, mortgage, mortuary, mortification, all words come for death. M O R, moribund. So after death, there is no progress. So moribund is a point where no progress is happening. Economy has come to a moribund point. Successive three quarters, there has not been growth. So moribund point, a moribund company. An organization which has come to a moribund point. That means there is no progress happening for a long time. Okay? A moribund patient is also a patient who does not so show any sign of recovery. So moribund patient. Morbid, we have to That's also related to this root only, morbid. So morbid is death-like, gloomy, sad. Something which is just opposite of cheerful, that is morbid. Okay? Morbid is also deadly. Fine? So answer here is morbid. Okay? Yeah, Shitish, 35 minutes you are supposed to spend on verbal ability. So in that, you will have to devote your time equally. I mean, you will have to devote your time in proportion of the number of questions. So 16 questions around, if we assume that 2019 pattern is going to be repeated, which is very likely to be repeated because 2018 as well, there were 16 questions. So if that is the pattern, you will have to devote major proportion of your time on RC. Especially for those of you who are good at RC and can you know tackle long passages, lengthy passages, we should definitely um, you know, plan your strategy around reading comprehension. And second part should be vocab. Right? So if you know the words and, you know, if you have revised the word list, high frequency words, and if you have practiced 
sufficiently the previous year papers of IFT, then vocabulary should not be a problem for you. Okay? And this is not very time consuming. Except those questions which are going to be designed in a cross code way. So in cross code, you will have to you know, read a lot, understand a lot of information, absorb a lot of data, and then you know read the question. Except those questions, vocabulary questions are going to be very less time consuming. Okay? So Yes, that is the ideal strategy, 25 questions, 25 minutes on RC, rest of the time you should devote off the gallery. Yes, so that also comes into the gallery, idiomatic expressions and foreign words on part and parcel of the gallery. Okay, next question. Yes, very good. Answer is superific, right? A soft, monotonous tone is superific for the audience. So, a soft, monotonous voice which speaks. Yeah, so a soft and monotonous voice serves as superific for the audience. They are put to sleep. They feel sleepy. They feel boring or sleepy, right? So that way, superfix, something which induces sleep, something which makes you want to go to sleep, is superfix. Is it fitting into the second sentence as well? Let's see, it was many months since Whitehead had gone to bed sober. He has started to use vodka as a superfix when the night terror began. So that means whenever he had difficulty in sleeping in the night, he would take vodka. And that would serve as a superific. Superific means vodka was serving uh, for him as a superific. He would sleep after consuming some vodka, right? So palladium is not at all fitting here. Palladium is a is an object, is a rare element, just like platinum, right? So that is no way of fitting here. Maverick is an adjective, and it is used for a person who is idiosyncratic. Yeah, so a person who is not conventional or a person who is not traditional. Maverick, especially when it comes to art, music, or literature. Right? He does not follow the traditional path. He's a bit eccentric, idiosyncratic. He has his own style. Right? A person who is also full of whims and fancies is Maverick. A bit whimsical. Okay? Yes. A person who, is, who has a revolutionary streak will also be maverick. A maverick artist. A maverick painter. Okay? So, Makul Pida Hussain was also a maverick painter. However controversy his paintings created or however disputed as a figure or as a painter he was, he did not stop following his path. He was kind of an eccentric man. Okay? So that is how you can define a maverick person. Okay? Are we clear? Chill. Next.
All right, so Abhishek Singh says, is puerile. Shudesh, uh, are you asking the meaning of incriminate? All right, so incriminate is nothing but accuse. Right, so incriminating char charges. Right, so the circumstance or the circumstantial evidence are incriminating the husband behind the murder. Incriminating, that means it, they are suggesting, the circumstantial evidence are suggesting the husband may be involved in the murder. Right, incriminating, that is accuse, accusatory. Then what is the answer here? Is incriminating fitting in both the sentences? Alright, so this seems dash considering that fair use itself is a gray area rather than a fine line. Why superimpose a fine line here? So puerile basically has two meaning, right? One is childish. Juvenile, immature, not adult, that is the meaning of puerile. Second is trivial, mamuli, insignificant, inconsequential. Okay? Fine. So, uh, yes, your answer is correct, Abhishek. Answer is going to be B. This seems pretty puerile, considering that fair use itself is a gray area rather than a fine line. Why superimpose a fine line here? Now, second, he was greeted with half a dozen really puerile comments, nonsense comments, or comments which should not be taken seriously. Take it? No. So, but it's not fitting in both the sentences. Incriminating is not fitting in both the sentences. And here, it's not incriminating. He was not accused. The comments were puerile. You have to decide. What is defining the comments? Incriminating is not defining the comments. It's not defining the comments. Take your answer is puerile. Two meanings of puerile. Secondary and uh, you know, primary and secondary. Both meanings are applicable in this sentence. Chali, next. Alright, I hope you are clear with the meaning of these words. Placative comes from this root. Placate. Placative gestures, right? Conciliatory. Or pacifying. Mollifying. Kisi ko shant karna. Igrijis comes from GRE. So that comes from extremely bad error. Extremely egregious error is something which is heinous or something which is vicious, viciously bad, egregious. Congenital comes from G. Since birth. Right? So, as I have been saying all in all my sessions that SNAP and IFT both pick the vocabulary questions from NL. 
right so this is a telling example of that idea this question has been taken directly all the words are directly taken from nls i'll give you some more questions so this is actual ift question in one of these years um this question appeared in ift this style of question used to appear in ift two sentences one word is fitting in both the sentences in kai saal lagatar aaya tha ift mein so dekhiye aap ye teeno words are from nl two words egregious is outstanding standing out of the group but for extremely bad reasons somebody who is extremely bad or somebody who is who has done something really abominable hate worthy should be categorized as egregious criminal right extremely bad so that's how gre root word is applicable Viciously bad. So answer बताइए यहाँ पे. So you may be confused because the answer is D. None of the words is actually fitting in these sentences. Is the answer is D. ठीक है? यहाँ पे जो root है, that is G R E. ये root class में मैंने किया था. NLP class में मैंने किया था. So aggregate. आप इकट्ठा करते हैं और उसका मीन निकालते हैं सो दैट इज एग्रीगेशन कॉन्ग्रीगेट कमिंग इन ह्यूज नंबर राइट सो कमिंग इन ह्यूज नंबर दैट इज ग्रुप सो जी आर इज फॉर ग्रुप सेग्रीगेट सेग्रीगेट इज अवे फ्रॉम द ग्रुप सो सेग्रीगेशन होता है रेशियल लाइन्स में लोगों को अलग अलग किया जाता है If they are infected, they are segregated from the crowd. Segregation is departure from the group, right? And uh, gregarious, somebody who always wants some or other companionship, right? So a person who loves to be with other people, who doesn't live solitary life, who doesn't live alone. Gregariousness. Some animals are gregarious. Okay? Like deer. So G R E is a root word here. Now this word, egregious, is also coming from this root, and this is also coming from herd or group. So it is so bad that it is cited as an exception. Okay? It is so bad. So criminals are criminals, or crimes are crimes. But when somebody commits so heinous crime that it defies any description, or that it, you know, appalls everyone, it is an egregious crime. So what happened in Nirbhaya case? So rape, after all, is rape. Crime, after all, is rape. Crime, right? But what happened in Nirbhaya case? That was an egregious act of cruelty, egregious act of mercilessness. So egregious case or egregious crime. Now, so much more egregious, extremely bad. It defies any description. Standing out of the group, but for a bad reason. ठीक है सभी criminal से ये अलग है because it is egregious crime. Now it it is actually used not only for crime. I use the example of crime, but it is actually used for anything. Egregious error, egregious grammatical error, right? So a, for a purist, any error can be an egregious error which defies the description. Basic things, right? So egregious can be for anything which is extremely bad. Okay. Now grammar. Which is grammatically incorrect? You see the directions clearly. Which of these sentences is grammatically incorrect?
I don't think vocabulary is your vulnerable point. You seem to be getting odd in vocabulary. Okay, tell me, banana. Which of these is grammatically incorrect? Is it three? All right. Let's see what other others think. So, what should be the correction, Shivish? If you say it's C, what should be the correction? How can the sentence be rectified? Yes, answer is C. Let me tell you why. The Wolves invaded Gaul in 461 AD. Right? This is the complete sentence. Very good. Very good. Answer is C because there has to be a set of comma dividing this sentence, this part of the sentence from the main sentence. It is non-essential clause. Non-essential clause because it gives you extra information. If the information is deleted, it does not change the meaning of the sentence. The who's invaded Gaul in 461A. Right? Now here, this is a non-essential information which is always separated from the main sentence with a set of comma. Okay? So when I say cat is conducted by ions, right? If I give you extra information, which is a management entrance exam is conducted by ions. So the main sentence is CAT is conducted by ions, which is a management entrance exam. So this information, if I remove this information from the main sentence, it does not change the main sense. It does not change the main sentence. The sense and the sentence remain the same. Hence, this non-essential clause needs to be separated from the main sentence with a set of form. Answer is C. The sentences are correct. No grammatical error. Take care. One more question. Now please see the constru uh, instruction. Now you have to see which sentence is grammatically correct. Identify. Detect the error. Inverted commas. Are you using colon or semicolon? Write colon or semicolon. C O L O N or semicolon.
Okay, right. So uh, you say C. All right. So grammatically correct sentence is yes, C. Very good. Shitaj. So who was a brilliant mathematician using ability with numbers to explain the universe? Now let's see what errors are there in these sentences. Okay. The biggest strict constructionist recommend fidelity to the constitution as written. No one objects more than they do to judicial reinterpretation. Right? Then is incorrect. Okay. So. This is okay colloquially, right? So you need to differentiate between two versions of English. So when you say he is older than me, so that's okay colloquially. That's admitted collo in colloquial English. That is in conversational English. But when it comes to your exam, that admits only registered use, or that admits only the standard use. It is always he is older than I am, right? So I am older than he is, right? So that's how the construction should be. So that is why A is incorrect. B says when a candidate runs for office, they must. It's incorrect pronoun reference. When a candidate is singular, it should have singular pronoun replacing a candidate. They is Plural pronoun, which should go with when candidates run. So that is why this is also incorrect. Okay, look at B. Despite the cuts, there are services the hospital has. Now, please remember, modifiers is one favorite topic of IFD. Every year, I mean, this has been my observation. Every year, it tests your understanding of modifiers. Now, in this question, the error lies in the modifiers. Despite the cuts, there are services. Where is the subject? Right? So, the subject has to be here. Despite the cuts, hospital offers the services and will continue to provide to doctors. So, that's how the subject, doc, hospital, has to be introduced here. Right after the phrase. Answer is C. It doesn't have any grammatical yeah, fine. A candidate runs is perfectly fine. I did not object to it. Shitesh, the problem lies here. After comma, they cannot come for candidate. It has to be he, yes. So when a candidate runs for office, he must expect to have their personal life scrutinized. So here also, there should not come. So there has to be harmony in the pronoun reference. Are we clear? Do we still have any ambiguity about this? Yeah, fine. So let me uh, first give you the usage of colon. Okay, so first usage of colon is it introduces a list. Okay? So, when I say these are my favorite actors, colon, A, B, C, full stop. Okay? The only condition for using colon here is the sentence which comes before colon has to be an independent sentence, a stand-alone sentence. Then only you can use colon. Alright? So when I say these are my favorite actors, colon, A, B, C. I cannot say my favorite actors R and colon, A, B, C. That's going to be incorrect because colon ke pehle wala sentence has to be independent or the independent sentence? Nahi. Okay? So that's one usage of colon. Introducing a list. Second usage of colon is this. Completing an idea. Complimenting an 
idea. Yes, yes, first letter is going to be capitalized. All right, now this is completing an idea. So when I say, we have only one option left. We have only one option left. So it's an incomplete idea because what is the option that we are left with? Colon. Wait for the vaccine. Wait for the vaccine. Alright? So please see again, the sentence which comes before colon has to be an independent sentence. Has to be a stand-alone sentence. It should convey complete meaning. Yes, that's going to be considered an error. So you better watch out for that. Okay, so there are these are two major usage of colon. Colon is used to introduce a list. Colon is used to complete an idea. Okay? Are we clear? I can suggest only one thing for you for IFT. Colon. Manage time well. Can you see that? I can suggest you, I can suggest you only one thing for IFT. So standalone sentence, I can suggest you only one thing for IFT, standalone sentence, complete sentence. But what is that idea? The idea is incomplete. Okay? So colon, manage time well. Are, are we clear? So manage time well is going to be the idea which is going to complete the previous sentence. Fine. Chale. Next. But I get. What is the answer of this question? There are two blanks, two words are to be chosen from the options to make the sentence complete. Alright, so this is going to be your clue, very clear clue that's there in the sentence. Benulence. Vanulence is for bitter. Also poisonous. Virulent form of virus. Right? So virulent variety of aloe vera. Something which is not innocuous. Rather, it's poisonous. So bitter is going to be the meaning of virulence here. So with this key word, with this clue word, try to fit in the sentence. Try to fit in the words. Siddharth, you say it's C. Alright. See, because of this word, 
virulence that's extremely negative. You can easily eliminate these two options. It cannot be melodious virulence. It cannot be harmonious virulence. Okay? So very clearly, these two options are outrightly eliminated. Now, it's effortless, difficult. If you decide which word is fitting in the first blank, you are through with your answer. The bell hung on the door by means of a curved ribbon of steel, was dashed to circumvent, was difficult to circumvent, was effortless to circumvent. Yeah, so that is why B is not there because you are possibly talking about it was hopelessly cracked and that is why it was difficult to move. Right? So answer is C. So though it was a fluke, but yes, answer is C. Right? Impudent is rude. Difficult to obey. Right? I mean, somebody who does not obey. Unruly. Rude. Obnoxious. So, here you are saying impudent virulence. This bell is not listen, listening to anybody. Uncontrolled, does not obey, does, cannot be moved. So, that way this word has been used for a bell, which on a slightest provocation clattered behind the customer with impudent virulence. So, that way, impudent is somebody who is rude. Same as insolent. On face insulting. Somebody who is brazenly insulting on somebody on face. So that is insolent. Same as impudent, rude, obnoxiously, outspokenly insulting. Alright, so but virulence is possibly the clue word which gives you the idea that these two words are not fitting, cannot be compatible with virulence, these two words and then first blank becomes your lead for choosing the answer. Chale, one more question. This is also an IFK question. All right. So in this question as well, you can easily eliminate the options if you understand the context well. The context is of is of things which is not comfortable to the point of suffocation. Right. So I need something which is negative. So the question, the word which is going to define the question has to be negative. Something which is suffocating. When started by anything perplexing, he used to squint. This is also negative, right? So whenever he you, he says something perplexing or something uh, which confused him, which confounded him, he would start to squint, dash. So genially is eliminated because second plan is not going to have genially, friendly. He's not going to squint genially. Palpably, horribly or frightfully. So all these three words can come. So here, first blank becomes your clue. So here question can be courteous. So it's very polite. So if the question is very courteous, polite, why would somebody feel suffocated? Answer is not A. Why, if the question is so civil, sorry, considerate is also eliminated because of genial. Now if question is so civil, civil is again, something which is polite, which is courteous, in a civil manner, 
So that is also not the answer. Answer is very clearly brusque. Brusque is a curt reply. Curt, brusque. Questions are extremely pithy or extremely concise to the point of being impolite. It was a brusque reply. So that is, it was very short, but same time it was impolite. Okay? Answer is B. So please remember, when I say, please make your answers concise or to the point. Or this word, which is also used for abridged. All these words are used for short to the point things. But curt and brusque also mean the same thing, but they are negative. The connotation is negative. Right? So don't speak in a brusque language when you face an interview. Try to be inaugurative. That means try to be courteous as well as try to show them that you are willing to explain things. You are willing to describe things. Don't be brusque in your answers. Right? So when you say, when somebody asks you, um, you know, are you willing to take up marketing as your specialization? No. So that's going to be a very brusque reply. Very brusque because it's to the point, but same time, it's definitely clearly negating and clearly giving the answer, but it is curt reply. That means it's not very courteous. It's not polite. Okay? So brusque, curt, negative, concise, laconic, abridged. Pithy is also another word. Pith se aaya hai. Pith is the central part of something. The pith of fruit, the central part of something. So when you say it was written in a most pithy manner, so that means it was written in a most concise manner. So pithy is also positive. Laconic, abridged, concise, all are positive. Curt and brusque are going to be negative. Meaning same. Chale, next thing. Yeah, so taciturn is also negative. Right? So when you call somebody taciturn, okay. So taciturn, reticent. Both speak less. These are men or women or people with few words. But taciturn is negative because this person is expected to speak. But he does not speak. The reticent does not speak because he is shy. Or he is diffident. Tabi wo nahi bolta hai. Okay? But taciturn is a person who does not speak at all. Even at places where he is expected to say something and speak. Okay? So taciturn is also negative. Yeah. So what is the answer of this question? Three blanks. Like... That. So this is IFT question, actual IFT question. All right. Now, the clue for you to choose your right word is going to be though. So, you need contradictory words here. Right? So, vanity and pride are these things, though the words are often used dash. So, first two words are to be antonymous. Okay, so uh, no, answer is not A. So vanity and pride are same things, though the words are often used differently. Fine. 
without being vain. Pride relates more to our analysis of ourselves. No. Look at this sentence. Vanity to what we would have others think of us. Hum kya chahate hai? Ki log hamare baare mein kya soche? That is vanity. We would want others to think about us. That is vanity. That means what we think of ourselves. Right? What we think of ourselves should come first. That is your opinion. It's not analysis. It's opinion. So vanity and pride are different things. Though the words are often used synonymously. Okay? Because here he's talking about the distinction. That means author is talking about these words being different. Shitesh, look at this. In this part of the sentence, in, in this part of the paragraph, what is he doing? What the author is doing? He is trying to bring the distinction between pride and vanity. That means the very first part, the very first sentence of this paragraph should talk about the main idea that he is, to, he is going to progress further. He is trying to bring forth the distinction, the difference. Ki vanity kya hai, pride kya hai. Pride wo hai jo hum apne baare mein sochte hai. Vanity wo hai jo hum logo ko, logo ke liye sochte hai ki wo humare baare mein kya sochte hai. So he is not talking about the similarity of these words. He is talking about the difference, the distinction. Okay? And it's not analysis. It's not analysis. Okay? Next. Yes, Arjun. That's also uh, the clue. Next, good night. Right? Here also, Yukli Yukli is this. So, luck. Which word is going to define luck? Most dash luck. So, Vidanti says it's A. Shitit also says it's A. Fine. So, ingenious. Ingenuous. Ingenuous is someone who is artless, naive, right? Ingenuous, bola bala, naive person, guileless, artless, who believes others easily. Ingenious is very inventive. Pranam is three. The man who holds highest number of patents is an inventive man. He has ingenious mind, ingenious capabilities. Okay? So ingenious is somebody who is extremely innovative and inventive, creative. Whereas ingenuous is... Alright. Crafty is a negative word. Okay? Now, during the heated discussion, the leader of the group ingeniously refuted all the claims brought by his opponents very cleverly. Crafty has a negative connotation. Take care. Later, everybody acknowledged that he survived by most incredible luck. Answer is A. 
No, Arjun, ingenuous is bhole pan se. He actually refuted, rejected. Refute is to reject. Jawab nahi diya usne. He possibly, you know, artlessly he replied. Very honestly he replied. No, but he actually refuted all the claims brought by his opponents. So B is not the answer. Answer is A. And here, B, incredulous luck ke se hoga. Luck cannot be incredulous. No, but incredible is going with luck. The second blank, Arjun, is luck. And that is incredible. Ingenious is going with how he did something, how he refuted the claims of his opponents. Right? Fine. Next, the diet. Now, please see the direction clearly. IFP aapko kabhi bhi bamboozle kar sakta hai. By giving an analogy here, or by you know, giving the direction which does not show the same relationship. Please, this is actual IFP question. That's why I picked, it, picked this up to give you an idea that you need to read the directions very carefully. You silly mistakes, mat karna, please. Chali, next. What is the relationship between plentitude and abundance? The abundance of vaccine. So Prime Minister is coming on natural television again and again showing there is abundance of vaccine and nobody will be deprived of the vaccine. When time comes, everybody will be inoculated. There is abundance. Abundant resources. So too many, too much. Okay? So is plentitude. So when you have plenty of something, you have too much of something. You have surfeit of something, multitude of something. Okay? So the relationship is of synonyms. Plentitude is something which is in abundance. All right? So augury, divination, endurate, consolidate. Perspicacity, transparency, multi or muzzle. What is the answer? D or A? Shitak says is DNA. So which of these is not the synonymous sphere? That's what you have to choose, right? Which of these is not synonymous in relationship? That's going to be your answer. Okay? Augury, we discuss augury when we discuss. Prophecy. The question, second question, which was based on prophecy, prophecy noun and prophecy verb, I gave you the augury. So augur and augury. Okay? So augury, when you can foretell future, right? So augury is, you know, in a way related to divinity because when you have some supernatural powers, then only you can foresee future. Then only you can, um, you know, see what is going to happen in future, what lies ahead in future. Organy is always with divination, divinity. So this is not the answer. This is in a way synonymous. Some relationship is there. Endurate is hardened. So sediments are there, they are slowly hardened. So that is endurate. Same is consolidate, right? Jama hona or slowly slowly strong ho jana. So that is consolidate. Perspicacity, perspicacious is somebody who is very intelligent. A person who is perspicacious can see through things. He is extreme, extremely gifted in terms of 
understanding things. He can see through things very clearly. So perspicacious is a person who is extremely sagacious, full of wisdom. Same as perspicacity is also with clarity. Perspicacity in your argument. There has to be perspicacity in your writing. That means clarity, lucidity, so that I can understand what you are writing. Right? So transparency is also seen. Clarity, answer is D. This is not synonymous. All other words are in a way synonymous. D is not sharing synonymous relationship. Answer is D. Alright? So mult is basically punishing someone by penalizing them. Oh, sorry, punishing someone by taking money from them, by texting them. Okay? So that is mult. Muzzle is that snout which animals have. So no relationship at all, basically. Okay? So the snout, the, the mouth, or the nose part of the animal, especially dog or um, you know other animals which have snout, very clearly conspicuous snout on their face, that is muzzle. Okay? So this is the answer because no way of relationship is all synonymous. Are we clear? Chale. Choose the opposite of repudiate. All our previous IFT questions, I'm picking up IFT questions because IFT has a tendency of repeating the words which appeared in previous year papers. Okay? And that is why in my sessions, I have been urging all of you to go through previous year papers. The question Shubhij, the first one um, about prophecy and prophecy has been repeated three times in different ways. Three times, this word only, prophecy with C, prophecy with S. So this is just the first one instance. In my special classes, I have cited multiple examples of those uh, questions which have been repeated in IFP. So you will be immensely benefited if you actually complete 10 years papers of IF. Believe me. Actually, answer with I repudiate. Repudiate basically is to reject. Reject or deny. Right? Deny. What is going to be the answer? Opposite. Yeah, so sanction is going to be approved. Sanction is going to be the answer because sanction means approve. Okay? And reject is, uh, repudiate is to reject. Now, sanction, please understand. This is a contra -nem. Sanction is a contra -nem because it's ke do opposite meaning. Hota hai. So, sanction ka one matlab hota hai approve. So, the law has been sanctioned by the bank. So, that is approve. Sanction also means ban, just opposite of approve. Right? So the entry of Pakistan has been sanctioned in, in international summits. So the entry of Pakistan has been sanctioned, that means it has not been approved, rather it has been banned. So it is a contra nem. Contra nem wo words hote hai, jinke do opposite meaning hote hai. Eki word ke do opposite meaning hote hai. Sanction is one of those words. Okay? Chale, answer is sanction here. Grandi look print.
What is very close, Shivaj? Okay, so the previous one. Alright, so but it does not mean reject. Right? So, uh, no other option is going with the opposite, but it has one meaning which is opposite of repudiate. So, that way, two meanings of sanction, one of the meanings is opposite of repudiate. So, it's yes, so granulocution is megalocution, right? So, in both the ways, you speak in a very bombastic way, right? So you have a very affected style of speaking and you speak in a way which is self-important. You give too much importance to yourself when you speak in a granulocution. Granulocution is also bombastic. It's pompous. It's also bravadocio. Bravadocio is also when you are Speaking in full of vanity, you give too much importance to oneself, right? So, pompous, bombastic, grandilocution. I'll give you more words, right? Answer is going to be D here. D. Okay? What is the opposite of veneration? There is slight difference between verbose and grandilocution. Okay? So grandilocution is always marked by speaking with full of vanity. You are giving too much importance to yourself. Right? And you are trying to be larger than life when you speak in a grandilocution. Right? But verbose is using too many words. You could have curtailed the way you are speaking or the way you are writing. But you use a lot of words. Okay? So that is verbose. Grandilocation is always the style. The style is larger than life. The style is very effusive. Chale, next. Choose the opposite of veneration. Yeah, Shidej, so if there is no other option which is fitting, then verbose can come as a synonym. But it is not exactly a synonymous word with this. All right, fine. So, should it say is D? Any other option? Which you feel is the answer or could be the answer? So, veneration is to revere. Revere is same as regard. And same as deference. Right? So, defer is verb. When you say deference, it becomes noun and then it has the meaning of respecting someone. Okay? So deference, veneration, reverence, all mean giving regard, respect to someone. These are formal words. Answer is yes, D, burlesque. Burlesque is basically ridiculing someone. It's plain mockery. Alright? Lampooning is another word. Right? So, lampoon, basically burlesque is a show. A comical show. 
which you know mimics famous people. Where mimicry artists come and they mimic famous celebrities, usually who are in politics or in other social sectors, other you know areas of society. So this kind of program is burlesque. So from this, the root, um, the verb has come to signify anything which is which ridicules those people who are venerated or those people who are uh, famous. Okay, so that is a burlesque. Okay, so burlesque is same as mockery, same as lampoon. Fine. Answer is D. Choose the opposite. We did this word, perspicacious. Abhi piche aaya tha. So, see, I have taken the words from two papers. Perspicacious and one of the options in earlier question, perspicacious is question here. So, I would advise you also go through the options. So, you will know that what is the IFT ka rhythm or what is the words. And any words they say, they are going to pick up words for questions as well as options. Yes. Yeah, it's a kind of a show. Okay. Is Optus going to be the answer here? Perspicacious is extremely intelligent. A person who can see through things, who is shrewd, astute, high level of understanding, great level of understanding, who is extremely discerning, perspicacious. Okay? Very positive word. Perspicuous. Because IFT is confusing word. I mean, it keeps on giving confusing words. Perspicacious is used for a person. Perspicuous is used for things. Something is perspicuous. Okay, so perspicuous writing style. Chetan Bhagat writes in a very perspicuous style. Easily understandable and that's why he's so famous. Perspicuous argument. Clearly understood. Right? So perspicuous is something which is clear. Perspicacious is somebody who sees through things very clearly. Who can understand things very clearly. Both are adjective. One is used for things. One is used for people. Answer is yes. Be obtuse. It's dull person. Dim-witted. Empty-headed. Somebody who is imbecile. Or somebody who is vacuous. Obtuse is somebody who is dim-witted. Okay? Stupid idiot. So vacuous comes from V A C root word. So vacation, vacuum, evacuate, empty. Okay? Root word is V A C. That means empty. Vacation, khali time, empty time. You have uh, vacancy and uh, vacuum, evacuate to empty a place. Usi se hai empty headed. Okay? So vacuous, obtuse, imbecile, all are same. That means no intelligence. Wrongly spelt word mentioned among the following options. Which of these words is wrongly spelt? There were three questions. I picked up only one. Dull person or uh, a person who is dim-witted may be full of energy, but he, his intelligence level is low. So, vivacity using vivaciousness may not be the correct word here. You say it's D, cerebral. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, so yes, very good. Recalcitrant is the answer here. Very good. Right? So, this word means somebody who is unruly, 
difficult to control recalcitrant answer is t r e m t contemporaneous is somebody who is contemporary mahatma gandhi and jawaharlal nehru were contemporaries right so they belong to same era they were co evil co evil is also contemporaries belonging to same era same time belligerent bellicos both me extremely extremely aggressive not really a teenager can be recalcitrant who is difficult to control who is unruly who is defiant disobeys and same way a child can also be recalcitrant recalcitrant is also used for elephants unruly difficult to control Okay, the maverick is somebody who has different different streak, a streak which makes him, you know, do certain things which are not done by other people. Bellicose, belligerent, extremely aggressive people who are always ready to fight. Pugnacious is also a word synonymous with belligerent. Belligerent policy of America. It always waged war. It always preferred war rather than negotiation. Okay. Belligerent policy is of um, Donald Trump. Okay, so extremely aggressive, hegemonic. Epicurean is somebody who is conniving, not incorrigible. Yeah, so incorrigible is something that defines recalcitrant, but that is not the meaning of recalcitrant. Okay, Epicurean. is somebody who is a noiser okay somebody who understands food art literature and has a fine taste for these things and somebody who has keen sense of judgment for these things so that is epicurean if somebody is an epicurean taste that means he knows a lot about food their styles different cuisines and different you know ingredients which are put into food right so that is what is epicurean Epicurean can also be for no, it's not in a poem. It is not in a poem. Chale, next question is grammar. Quickly, I two questions, two consecutive questions for grammar. Yes. So mark the correct sentence in the following. Okay, so both of you say it's B. All right. What is the error in first sentence? Yes. So that's first is is not correct here. It should be as. So who many people consider as the greatest footballer? All right. When the tension with the business partners increased, Mr. Singh decided to visit them personally and talk to who. Whoever is willing to solve the discord. No, 
it's fine with the business partner. It's okay. It's okay. The error does not lie here. When the news about the decline in the quarterly sales of the product broke out, it was difficult to say who the company or whom the company would hold responsible for this disaster. What should be here? It should be whom. If we go from the purest point of view, okay? whom should be the correct word here? That is why this is also not the answer. D. Who do you think was supposed to meet Mr. Brown from the news bureau, the well-known author, well-known modifier? Now, where this phrase should be put, should be placed? The well-known author is defining Mr. Brown. Who do you think was supposed to meet Mr. Brown, the well-known author from the news bureau, during his week-long visit to Delhi? That's how the sentence is to be. Reverted. This is also incorrect. Answer is C. C does not have any grammatical error. Are we clear? Answer is not B. Answer is C. Yes, what you are saying for D is absolutely correct. But here, whoever is correct because Mr. Singh decided to visit them personally and talk to whoever. The person, subject is Mr. Singh. He is going to talk whoever. Okay, so Vedanti, what you are saying from the or from both the parts you have written are same from the or from the. Okay, okay, fine. Which which sentence are you talking about? The news about the decline in the quarterly sales. See. Yeah, so that is um, incorrect. I mean, that is just mis uh, wrongly written. But the answer is C. C. I got it. I got it. Okay. Okay. Are we clear? No, no. Whoever is also fine. Whomsoever, just may be, jo be. But here, the sentence is whoever, whomever. Okay. Next. Okay, next question. All right, fine. Yeah, it's in Apollo. All right.
So A is incorrect because it has to be the porch light is broken again. Right? So that is why A is not the answer. B says if you keep on losing your composure on minor issues, that isn't going to get you anywhere. Right? So B is also incorrect. With this, this attitude is not going to get you anywhere. So going to get you anywhere. This is the phrase. Not going to get you nowhere is going to be double negation. Answer is not B. In the meeting, Mr. Mehta informed the executives that they have to fulfill the target regardless of the stringency of the deadline. The call for the assembly was very disappointing as we haven't hardly initiated one more double negation. Hardly is not going to be followed by not or is not coming with a negative sentence. I hardly took any break. I did not hardly take any break. Incorrect. I hardly took any break. Okay? So answer is going to be C because D is also incorrect. As we hardly initiated our discussion, hardly is always negative. Hardly, rarely, seldom. These words are negative. You can't have not with these words. All right? Chill. A few more questions and then we are going to call it a day. Quickly. With hardly, rarely, seldom, never, neither, no sooner. Up not me lagate. Because these words are already in negation. Okay, so when I say I hardly visit my parents. What is going to be the question tag? What is going to be the question tag? Don't I or do I? I hardly visit my parents. Yes, answer is B for here. This happens in an order, orderly sequence, but their timing varies. So orderly go opposite chain. The answer is B. Very good. So, I hardly visit my parents. What is going to be the question tag? Yes, do I? Okay, because this is negative. So, the question tag is going to be positive. All right. Next. Alright, so hardly, no sooner, never, rarely, seldom, all are negative. Many of the earliest colonial houses that are still standing have been so modified. Itne badal chuke hain aur itne enlarged ho chuke hain that how A is fitting here. Yeah. 
yes, answer is D. इतने बदल चुके हैं और इतने इनलाज हो चुके हैं कि जो उनका इनिशियल डिजाइन था वो डिसर्नेबल है ही नहीं वो दिखता ही नहीं है वो समझ में ही नहीं आता है राइट प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड द टोन द कॉन्टेक्स्ट जो कॉलोनियल हाउसेस है वो इतने बदल चुके हैं उनको इतना मॉडिफाई किया जा चुका है और इतने इलाज हो गए हैं कि उनका जो पहले का डिजाइन था जो ओरिजिनल डिजाइन था जो इनिशियल डिजाइन था वो आज समझ में ही नहीं आता है डिसर्नेबल नहीं है कैन यू सी विदांति वाई बी और अदर ऑप्शन आर नॉट दी आंसर Yes, you cannot see, you cannot understand what their pattern was, what their initial pattern was, or what they were like earlier. ठीक है? So discern is to समझना किसी चीज़ को. Discerning eye, when you have discerning eye, that means you can easily understand things. चलिए, last few questions on analogies. बताइए, nuance, distinction, what is the difference, or what is the relationship? बताइए नुआंस एंड डिस्टिंक्शन और राइट बारीकियां नुआंस क्लियर डिफरेंस इट्स डिस्टिंक्शन दोनों का ही मतलब सेम है बट दिस इज वेरी माइल वेल इज द इंटेंसिटी इज हाई हियर ठीक है सो नुआंस बहुत ही बारीक सा डिफरेंस है दो येलो की शेड्स है नुआंस का डिफरेंस इन बोथ द शेड्स कुछ नुआंस मीनिंग होते हैं कुछ नुआंस ऑफ लैंग्वेज होते हैं Nuances of language होते हैं, so बारी किया shapes, distinction बहुत clearly आप देख सकते हैं कि there is clear distinction, all right? So nuance, distinction, that's the relationship. Answer is not A. No, that's not B either. Answer is hint and suggestion. Hint, I'm giving you clues indirectly. I'm I'm trying to imply something. I'm not giving you clear indication, but I'm just implying that is giving hint, suggestion very clearly telling somebody what to do. No, if vocabulary is your forte, you will not find difficulty in analogy. As long as you are clear with the relationship of the words, analogy will not be difficult. So, I mean, uh, I assume your vocabulary is very good. You will not have any problem with analogies. All right? Are we clear with this also? To be goshevis. Tell me if you are not clear with the meanings of these words. To be is somebody who is suave, very sophisticated man, who is refined, well mannered, and knows what to talk. What to say and how to behave is very refined, and you know, a person who speaks in a very polite fashion, courteous, would be. Just opposite is gossipy. Does not know what to say. Does not know how to, um, you know, make his appearance, you know, acceptable. Who does not. Have a appropriate understanding of social circumstances. A person who is awkward, inept, that is gossips. They are the basically right. Somebody who is not refined, very crude in his manners. 
ठीक है सताब इज गॉशरीज सो आंसर इज और सॉरी रिलेशनशिप इज ऑपोजिट बताए आंसर बताए फिर सो बेसिकली उर्बेन इज समी हु लैक्स गॉशरीज He is very apt. He is very sophisticated. He lacks gosheries. Gosh is a person. Gosheries characteristics. Chaliya, I'll give you the answer to this. No problem. Answer is this. Guileless is free from chicanery. Chicanery is deceit, deception, dhoka dhari. Okay, so that is chicanery. Here are three. Sly of hands, ठीक है? So she can be guileless is somebody who is artless, जो honest है, ठीक है? So artless ways of doing business, which is full of any trick, which is free from any trickery, ठीक है? So guileless, artless, both are same. She can be will be uh, opposite. So in a way, a person who is guileless, artless is free from she can be. Urbain is free from gossipings. He knows what to say. He knows how to present himself. Always apt, Urbain. So off, sophisticated, well mannered, well polished. Okay. Fine. So this is going to be the last question for today. Quickly attempt this question and tell me answer. All right. So miser and thrift both mean penny pinching, saving money, right? But this is negative. This is positive. Connotation is different. This is always used in a positive, negative way. When you call somebody miser, he is the man who does not spend money even on things which are even on things which are needed, which are essential, which are necessary. So that is miser. Penny pinching, skin flint. That is miser. Thrifty is someone who saves money for rainy days, who does not spend money like there is no tomorrow. Fine. So thrifty. When you call somebody thrifty, that person is providential. He saves money for rainy days. Okay. Future के लिए वो पैसा save करता है. So that is what thrifty is. So both mean same thing. पैसा कम खर्च करना. लेकिन ये नेगेटिव है ये पॉजिटिव है ये इकोनॉमिकल है दिस मैन इज इकोनॉमिकल ही सेव्स मनी एंड ही स्पेंड्स मनी ओनली ऑन थिंग्स व्हिच आर नीडेड फिफ्टी सेम एज फ्रूगल फ्रूगैलिटी वी ऑल लर्न द लेसन ऑफ फ्रूगैलिटी इन लॉकडाउन दैट हाउ इंपॉर्टेंट इट इज फॉर अस टू सेव मनी फ्रूगैलिटी थ्रिफ्टी ठीक है इंडियन सोसाइटी इज नोन फॉर थ्रिफ्ट एंड दैट इज व्हाई वी हैव सर्वाइव ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ रिसेशन एंड डिप्रेशन बताइए Answer is chauvinist patriotism. So this is negative, chauvinistic. So you feel your country is the best. Other countries are beneath, inferior, or less important than your country is. So that is chauvinistic feeling. Extreme 
feeling of superiority for your race, for your country, for your religion, maybe for your sex, or maybe for your community, right? So male chauvinism is easy. I mean, well, I mean, men, all men have this feeling, not all men, but usually some men have this feeling that they are superior to female, or they are more advanced, they are more intellectually empowered than women are, right? That is what is chauvinism. That is what is male chauvinism. So chauvinistic is, you know, feeling that your country is superior. Patriotism is love for your country. It's a positive word, it's a negative word. This is positive, this is negative. Meaning same thing. Chauvinist also loves his, loves his country a lot. Patriotic is also a person who loves his country a lot. But he does not demean other countries. He does not feel that other countries are inferior. Okay? Are we clear? So, here. Understanding of nuances. That means words exactly synonymous. Their shades of difference. Miser, thrift. Both are same. But their connotation is entirely different. And their connotation is only going to make you change in the meaning. Alright? So, with this, I come to the end of today's session. I gave you enough practice of vocabulary. Especially vocabulary. Grammar we could not cover more. Because uh, I'm going by the pattern of 2018-19, where there was more vocabulary, less grammar. Okay? So there were only six questions of grammar, more of vocabulary. I hope it gave you adequate practice and you will be able to remember the words which we discussed today. And please do uh, reading comprehension because that is going to be the predominant area of verbal ability. And I will try to cover one more thing um, for IFT preparation tomorrow at 6 o'clock. And you can attend my session on special class, which I'm going to take tomorrow morning at 10 for IFT practice. Take care. Thank you very much and have a nice day, all of you. Yes, do that. Don't miss doing that, Shridesh. All of you. All right. Good night.